What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Sadie, and I am back with another video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Um, the head coach, Jake Dickert, for Washington State University, he had an interview today, and he spoke on what he expects to see when Colorado plays Washington State this weekend. Well, Friday. Friday night, you guys. So, I hope you're tuned in. And if you did not know, uh, Shador and Cam, both quarterbacks for both teams, are trained by the same quarterback coach. So this is going to be a good game. Let's see what he had to say. Rocking and rolling, uh, but it is, uh, it's Colorado Buffalo week. I believe this is our opponent preview uh, segment here. They're four and six on the year. They're one and six in the pack. They started the year three and oh. They have a win over Arizona State. They have some crazy games they've played. Just, yeah. just wild. Yeah. Double overtime against Stanford, uh, up 29 nothing. Yeah. lost the game in double OT. They had a, a OT win over Colorado State, a, yeah. a like opponent, a familiar opponent. That was a wild game. That was a wild, wild game. Wild game. Yeah. Rivalry game. Yeah. Um, and, and and most recently, they've been some really tight ball games. They lost at the at the buzzer basically to Arizona. Yeah. Uh, Arizona's a really good squad. They they lost by seven to Oregon State. Oregon State's a very good squad. They, they've been in some some tight ball games. You know, I I think there's obviously a lot of mirroring with with the two teams and coming into the same situations about not having you know type of success you really want throughout the Pac-12 season after a pretty good start and. You know, I always think the make of a team is how hard they're playing when you when you watch them in the little things, even field goal block and kickoff and some of the things that not a lot of people talk about or mention, but they're playing with tons of effort. You know, obviously Coach Sanders has, you know, this team and the rebuilt team, they've done a really good job. You know, to get to this point, uh, I just think uh, they have a ton of skill players that they can really take advantage of on both sides of the ball. And, uh, you know, it really starts with quarterback in this league. You know, I think you know that, Chaz. Every week a unique and different uh, challenge and uh, you know Sanders obviously being the quarterback you're, he's going to remind you a lot of Cam you know not just mannerisms and movements but the way he escapes and avoids the pocket his level two ball I mean the touch that he puts on especially when he's moving around I think is really really elite I mean everyone's talking about him being maybe the top quarterback in next year's class and they surrounded him with a bunch of receivers that can really play you know obviously they're not shy about talking about some deficiencies at offensive line that you got to try to take advantage of. But, uh, you know, coordinator change two weeks ago, you can kind of see some differences. Not as much tempo, uh, using the tight end maybe a little bit less, using the Hunter kid in different ways and getting them the ball. Uh, but they really want to own space, and they're really explosive on offense. And, you know, I think they got a lot of skill players that they're going to continue to develop. Travis Hunter is yeah. uh, a two-way player, yeah. which is in, and of, in and of itself is unique. It's pretty fun to watch. Yeah. If, I, if I'm being honest, when you watch yeah. him on both sides of the ball, I mean, playing over 100 snaps of football, it's just so rare in today's world. And to see him do it at really an elite level, it's kind of fun to watch, if I'm being honest with you. So yeah. an elite corner and a really good playmaker at the receiver position. Uh, the, you mentioned uh, the coordinator change. Their new uh, play caller, and it's kind of co-OC, uh, is Pat Shermer. Yep. Um, folks may remember Pat Shermer. He was the head coach of the Giants in, in yep. the NFL. He's been in the NFL a lot. His yep. uncle was an NFL head coach or, or was an NFL coach. Yep. Um, so Shermer comes in with. You know, and and you know, Coach Sanders, Deion yep. Sanders comes in with all the NFL, yeah. you know, he Pro Football Hall of Famer, right? Better, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, you, you've got this kind of NFL influence here. Sean Lewis was the was the play caller, the uh, co OC now, um, yeah. and so that seems to be the change. So maybe less tempo, and you know, it's only been two weeks. It's yeah, so, so much you can change. So it's just hard when you're trying to game plan while well, you're seeing some old things, some new things. And what are they going to do? Yeah, the schematics are very similar, but you know, as a play caller to get that feel, you know, normally after 10 games, you have a really good feel for what they want to do in different zones and trying to feel our way out. But uh, you know, I think their success as offense has come through explosive plays. I mean, they're not afraid to take the ball down the field. They have very low – uh, play total in the low red zone for like 15 yards and in that means they're scoring from a long ways away so we got to be aware of it we got to stay over the top and we got to do a really good job in coverage and you know we got to have an edge of the defensive line position which i believe is our strength they have passed the ball extremely well they're uh, ninth in the country in, in pass yards fifth in the pack which goes to if you do the math on that it's <laughs> kind of amazing how, how many great yes. pass offenses are in the pack uh, they have one stat in particular that really jumps off the page okay. They are third in the nation, tied in turnover margin. Really? They, they are plus 11 in turnover margin. They lead the pack. They force a lot of fumbles, yeah. and they've gotten a lot of interceptions. Yeah, and the reason is, you know, I said it early in the week, they are a dictate defense. They're going to dictate the action to you. They're not going to wait and see what you do. They're going to be on the attack 
really for 60 minutes. And sometimes that can go really, really well. Sometimes there can be a seam in the defense and you give up explosive plays. But for them, it's created a lot of chaos and, and uh, obviously takeaways win games. You know, and that's what leads to success on the other side of the ball as well. So obviously very sound, very good front, very attacking. Uh, sometimes they'll get in and out of gaps, but they're going to, like I said, come after you. They're not afla- afraid to play zero coverage or man coverage, wherever it, it, s- it seems to be. And uh, they've done a really good job, I think, just being pretty consistent on that side of the ball. Charles Kelly is their defensive coordinator, first-year D.C., the new staff, first-year staff uh, in Boulder. He was with uh, Nick Saban in yeah. Alabama for uh, the last uh, three, four years, and then he was in the SEC while Tennessee a uh, year prior to that. And, and you can see a lot of those deals, you know, I like some bracket coverage, obviously, some wall two, a lot of exotic pressures on third downs, you know, some of the things that we do a little bit, but, you know, every week is a kind of a new and different challenge. So that's that's the difference, too. Being on the short week, you lose a day. So you lose a day of prep, you lose a practice. I mean, those, those are things where, you know, you kind of get right back to it. We didn't have a lot of time to soak in that Cal game, Chaz. It was Sunday, come in early, let's get a plan together. And by Monday morning, we were talking about game plan, and we are back on the practice field Monday afternoon. So, like I said, I think our guys have handled this short week very well. And this time of the season, it's about, you know, who's, you know, maxing out physically when you get to that game day because – you know, it's still about the details and the technique, but it is about feeling good and making sure you're playing fast. All right, that's our opponent preview segment. It's the Cougs against the Buffs. It's 7.30, 7 o'clock, 7.30 kick. Yes. Had to chat to confirm yeah, that. Okay. 7.30 kick, thank you. Uh, 5.30 airtime uh, Friday night here on the Palouse.